Let us pray. Our awesome, loving, <coughs> magnificent, long-suffering, forgiving, gracious Lord, we come to praise you, to give you the honor and the glory, to reach out to you, Lord, that you might touch our hearts, that we might do it even better each time we do it. And again, Lord, we thank you for everyone that's here. We pray that they might get a blessing, that their heart might be touched with your word, that we might see how wonderful it is to be in your word and to desire it, and to desire to read it and to follow it. And again, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. We pray, Lord, that each and every one again will get a blessing. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today we in First Peter, the second chapter. When we desire the sincere milk of the word, as the song says, our eyes will grow dim in the light of his glory and grace. <coughs> when I open the Bible, I find myself transported to another dimension. From this worldly dimension to God's dimension. A dimension of comfort, peace, and joy. We're commanded to desire the sincere milk of the word. As I begin to read the scriptures, I find a calmness comes over me as I realize that God has given me a blessed future through Jesus our Savior. Ironically, we're commanded to read and follow God's Word, and the Word tells us it's good for us, and also bless our children. You want to bless your children? All people really want to bless their children, and they would do almost anything for them. Knowing that our children will be blessed also when we desire to follow the sincere Word of God should encourage us to double our efforts to follow the Word of God. Deuteronomy 5, 9 tells us, Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children upon the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So you see that it can pass on down, and we see that. We're not educating our children, we, not we, but out in the world, they're not educating them about God, but He gives us a blessing and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Chapter 2 is full of the wonderful words of life. We can lay aside all our battles we're facing all the things that are happening to us. For God will disperse and confound our enemies. We not, need not to take heart all the insults and harsh words we hear, for we are to bless them with grace and peace, and maybe saving them from themselves, as the Bible commands us to do in 2 Timothy 2.24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach and patient. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. The Bible says these people oppose themselves. They don't even know it. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, which are taken captive by him and his will. We can set, see that Jesus set the example when we meet unbelievers. In 1 Peter 2.23 he says, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged righteously. When we suffer from others, we need to know that God is watching, and we'll repay them. I've had him repay me of people who were mean to me for their evil. Romans 12, 19, it says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. So we need not carry bitterness in our heart. We need to feel compassion on those who despitefully use us. For they're heading straightway into the wrath of God. It'd be better than going in, worse than going into a tornado than into the wrath of God. Let us desire the sincere work of God and let us be the sheep that return and to the shepherd of our souls. Today, in 1 Peter, the second chapter, we have some points that we want to discuss. Desire the sincere milk of the word. 
it has some side effects. You know, everything has side effects. You know, they take a, a, a dose of something that makes you worse over here than might clear this up. Well, the side effects of desiring the sincere milk of the Word of God is peace, joy, spiritual growth, freedom from fear and anger. We don't have to walk in fear because we are in the Word of God. We build our life on the chief cornerstone. And who is the chief cornerstone? Jesus, Jesus the Christ. Taking us from darkness into light. Submit to our governors even when the side effects are grief and hardship. He said, if you don't go against God, you have to do what they tell you. Let us return from the far country. You ever been to the far country? We're going to tell you how you get into that far country to the shepherd of our souls. Well, where can we find a cure for side effects of our anger and our distress? We're going to find that in the first verse. <clears throat> Wherefore, lay aside all malice and all guile, guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. We can get rid of these things that bother us by getting in the Word of God. Just open the Bible and read, oh, it's so wonderful. Well, how should we yearn for the Word of God? Pray the spiritual milk. As newborn babies. As newborn babies, desire the sincere milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. What do babies do when they're hungry? They let you know it. <laughs> they eat everything they can get their hands on, right? until they get a certain age and they get picky, but newborn babies eat anything most of the time. They believe hardly will not stop until they're full. Nothing can distract them. It's the way it should be with us. Nothing should distract us from the Word of God and it will help us grow. Well, who does this apply to? All of us. All of us, right. It says, well, we're going to find who it applies to right here, which is all of us in here, I believe. If so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Those who accept Jesus as their Savior, well, they have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Now let me make sure that people, you don't tell people you've got to believe in Jesus because the devils believe in Jesus. You've got to accept Jesus as your Savior. <laughs> there is a difference there. So you know, it, it's sometimes we make that mistake. Do you believe in Jesus? Well, do you, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Now, we're going to build our chief uh, life on the chief cornerstone. And it tells us, how much trouble is it to replace a bad cornerstone? You ever had to do that? It takes a long, long time because you no telling what you're going to have to do if you've got a bad cornerstone. Well, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Maybe we didn't start our life out on the cheap cornerstone. Anyone who has built a house or building will tell us that the cornerstone is very important for successful building. If we feel the cornerstone in the building already is bad, we have to go to great lengths sometimes to replace it. However, if the cornerstone in our life is not Jesus, it's a very easy fix. If not a Christian, we must be born again. If we're a Christian, we must rededicate our life to following God. Then we must desire the sincere milk of the Word to live by. We will not be perfect. Did you hear that? So I'm not going to be perfect no matter what you think. And I've got alibis for all the rest of it. But we will not be perfect. But we will know when we travel the wrong road and request the power of the Holy Spirit to get us back where we belong. Well, what are some spiritual sacrifices we can give to God? We just did over here in the choir. We sing, we praise, we honor. A life well lived is a spiritual sacrifice. And he tells us in the fifth verse, He also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable, acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. The Lord loves a cheerful giver, doesn't he? We may not be able to give a lot of money, but nothing can stop us from giving a lot of spiritual sacrifices, a lot of praise, honor, and glory to the King of kings and Lord of lords. Helping others is the Good Samaritan. 
a life well lived, a cup of cold water in Jesus' name. At the end of time, what will keep us from being confounded? There's going to be a lot of confounded people at the end of time. What's going to keep us from being confounded? We know Jesus Christ is our Savior. He says, Wherefore also it is contained in the Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. At the end of time of weeping and gnashing of teeth going on, confusion abounds as many will call for rocks to fall on them so they can hide, hide themselves from God. We will not be confused, but be safe in the arms of our dear Savior. The Bible says a lot of people today are stumbling. What do you think they're stumbling over? They're stumbling over the stone. Yes, that's right. They don't know the chief cornerstone, and they stumble right all over it, and they still can't find it. And one of, one of the problems today is they're doing what is right in their own eyes. Oh, how sad it is. In the seventh verse, it says, Unto you therefore which believe is precious, but unto them which ye be disobedient, the stone which the builders allowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Now, we find the catch word today is offended. Somebody offended me. They said something that offended me. Oh, I'm so sad. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to take you to court, put you in jail. Well, the thing that Jesus tells us, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Isn't that wonderful? He said, if you're not offended in me, you're blessed. You know, we once were lost in darkness, but now we found the light. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You know, uh, peculiar people. We are peculiar, aren't we? <laughs> That's what the people outside said, but the Lord said that too, which is also good. He calls us peculiar. So it's great to be peculiar people. We now follow the light of the new world. We did not know what to do when God's Holy Spirit convicted us and brought us into His marvelous light. Who did we belong to before we belonged to Jesus? To no one. <laughs> well, well, Satan. Satan. <laughs> Satan. Yeah. We belong to Satan. Isn't that scary? Yeah. We belong to Satan before we belong to Jesus. <clears throat> which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but have now have obtained mercy. We are sinners saved. We once were lost. Now we're found. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Well, how can we make our critics look bad? <clears throat> By living a good life. Yeah. <clears throat> a good Christian life. He says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from flesh and lust which wars against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. <clears throat> We must stop wanting things that we do not need. How do we know if we do not need something? We check it against the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So let's not put things in front of God that takes away from Him His praise and His glory. We should live so that people who say bad things about us will be able to see they were wrong, even if it has to wait until Jesus comes again. When he comes again, he's going to show those people how wrong they were. Uh, which law do you hate worse? The 
Well, I think mine starts with a T. A. X. X. Taxes. But he says, you've got to submit to those things. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him, for the punishment of evildoers, and for praise of them that do well. So if we do well, our governors and everybody should be happy with us. Taxes, I hate them, but you know what? I pay them. But if they try to get me to go against God's word, that is different. But if we don't like the law, we can work to get it changed. What is the advantage of following the law? It says, For so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. You know, sometimes we can get away with something, go around bragging about it. But that's not right. That's not good because it works against our witness to other people. It says, do not take advantage of the freedom we have in Jesus. As free and not use your liberty for cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. In Romans 12, 18, it says, if it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. You got a hard person to work for? What do we do? Well, he says, Servants, be subject to your master with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. Well, you know, I had a boss man that was paranoid, schizophrenic, and he and I go round and round. So maybe I didn't fare too well in that category. You know, a lot of people thought they'd come in and run roughshod over me, but they were in the wrong place. It never happened. <laughs> and I stood my ground and believe me I gave as good as uh, if not better than I received so following scriptures if I misapplied myself I have to ask for forgiveness to the Lord and ask for forgiveness you know if we do something wrong we're a little <coughs> more humble aren't we you know oh I'm sorry dear you ever said that I'm sorry dear I didn't mean to do that well you know he says it's also to be humble when we're right, you know. For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God in your grief, suffering wrongly, for what glory is it if when you buffet it for your faults, you should take it patiently? But if you do well and suffer it for it, you take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. You know, I, I worked at uh, RJR and... They came in and fired 400 people one day, and, and myself included, and Nabisco took over, and I had three in college and a house payment, but I just said, you know, Lord, it's in your hands. Well, sometime later on, they hired me back into another department, I received her retirement, but I was there for about three or four or five months without a job, and uh, I didn't get concerned, because I knew the Lord would bless me. Well, whose example of suffering should we follow? Jesus. Jesus. It says, For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not but committed himself to him that judges righteously. When we suffer from others, we need to know that God is watching and will repay them for their evil. In Romans 12, 19 again, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place into wrath, where it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we to live a different lifestyle, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should follow unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. We should follow the word. Ever been to the far country? You know where it is? Well, the 
was going to tell us. He said, let us examine our motives and see if we are in the far country. For you were as sheep going astray, but now are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. We might not think we've moved to a far country, but when we stray from the word of God, we've moved to a far country. And of course we're reminded of who went to the far country. The prodigal son. And who went away into far country. But what was the good news about that? The Father was always watching. And he's when we leave him and go to the far country, he's always watching and calling for us and hoping for our return of his child who had strayed. So when we stray, remember that the Father is looking for our return. Live a good life, as the Word tells us. Desire the sincere milk of the Word. Remember the side effects when you get in the Bible are peace, joy, spiritual growth, freedom from fear and anger. Build our life on the chief cornerstone, which is Jesus, taking us from darkness into light. Although we didn't start out with Jesus, we could switch immediately and He becomes our chief cornerstone. It is so easy to come back to God. It is a hard life to live. It is easy because we cannot be perfect. It says, submit to our governors even when the side effects are grief and hardship. And sometimes they are. You know, they got all kinds of rules and regulations that uh, we don't like. But it says, and to show that we are a child of God, we submit. And let us return from the far country to the shepherd of our souls.